So in the last video, we talked about this, the Ryzen 5 5600G, and we were gonna put it in the HP pre-built. Well, you might also notice that's not the HP pre-built. We'll talk about it. Okay, so admittedly, the plan was to put that 5600 in this HP pre-built. Uh, the 4600 in there, the 4600G resides in there right now. It is back in there because, well, uh, there were some issues. Uh, you might remember, or you might not, I don't know. Back when I first reviewed this, uh, this computer, this PC, this pre-built from HP, one of my complaints was that the BIOS in it was not very configurable uh, to the point where you can't, you can't upgrade the BIOS. So the only way for me to find out if it was compatible with the 5600G was to put it in there and, and try. Nope, didn't work. Uh, and after a little bit of playing around to find out, uh, I'm gonna have to do some more research, but as it stands right now, it doesn't look like an, I can upgrade that BIOS for that motherboard that's in the HP to put the 5600G. So what I've had to do, I've had to go back to my old standby, the test bench that we went ahead and tested the 4600G. We've tested a 4350. We've tested the, of course, the 3600X. And now we've tested the 5600G in this same setup. It's uh, got the Asus X5, X470 Prime Pro motherboard in it. It's got, uh, in this case, we took the motherboard, or we took the video cart out, so it doesn't have that. But it's got the Prism cooler on it. It's got the Trident Z, 30, uh, 32 gig of Trident Z memory running at 3600. It does have a SanDisk Extreme, one terabyte boot drive, and it's got a four terabyte Western Digital backup. So those are the things that are in it that basically, you know, it, it's a gaming type system as it stands right now. So it made for a pretty fair comparison. We took the video card out, like I said, so it does look a little bit empty in there. And yes, I have the glass case off because I've been testing. But anyway, we, uh, we were able to go ahead and get this swapped out and get it going like that. So giving that comparison, of course, we're always going to start off the way we always do with all these benchmarks was Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Now, Shadow of the Tomb Raider actually did give us a little bit of an issue because when I had the video card in here before, it was an RTX 3060 that we we're testing, and I inadvertent, inadvertently, yeah, I'll learn how to talk one of these days too. I must have left the DLSS on when I was doing some testing on the video cards because doing some troubleshooting, I couldn't get Shadow of the Tomb Raider to start up at all. Every time I would go to the options screen, she'd flip out on me and she'd just shut down. So I was able to find that I had to go to the option screen and hit reset in the bottom left-hand corner so that reset all the settings. The other solution to that is I did find somebody that said that you had to go back and change the registry. I wasn't prepared to go in there digging for that. I found, I, I figured I would try just hitting the reset first. That worked and we were able to do our testing. So everything did work out from there, worked out pretty well. And uh, overall, I found about 7% of an increase over the old scores to the new scores, including getting um, that 30 frames per second on 1080p low settings and getting up to 49 frames per second, a very, very playable 49 frames per second on 720p low. Um, it's not that magical 60 frames per second, but this is, a, uh, this is an RPG type game. This is not a shooter. So something like that, you know, in that mid 45 to 55 frames per second range ought to be just fine for you. And I was pretty impressed because we weren't getting those type of numbers before. We were only getting about 35 frames per second, I think it was. I don't remember what's on the chart here. About 35 or 36 frames per second in 720p with the other CPU, so or the other, the 4600G. So this is a pretty good improvement. Uh, likewise, when we go to Borderlands 3, we also saw an improvement this time at about 11%, and we did hit that magic 60 frames per second at 720p, but also a very playable 34 frames per second on 1080p. So uh, I would say that so far it's looking like you could probably stick this on 900p and, and be just happy with it, 900p low settings, and be pretty happy. Uh, it, it didn't take away from testing or playing the game or anything like that at all. In fact, it was uh, it went really, really smoothly. I was expecting there to be some dips or jerks or anything uh, like I did a little bit with some of the other processors that I've tested, but there wasn't. It ran it ran pretty smoothly, and I was I was pretty impressed with that. Uh, Dirt Five. Now, when we were testing the 
lower end NVIDIA graphics cards. You might remember the GT 730 and the GT 1030 we were testing. Uh, there was some big issues for some reason with Dirt 5. It just did not like those at all. It kicked them down to a very low frame rate, wasn't using all the memory, and just really, really confusing. We went anywhere from about 33 frames per second to you know, about 50 frames per second. So again, very playable. Uh, I would venture to say it was a fairly smooth 30 frames per second. You could probably lock that down at 30 and, and go from there at 1080p and, and have a console-like experience on 1080p low and never know any difference. It, it was really smooth. It looked pretty good. And I didn't have any kind of issues trying to do that. Didn't have anything like the issues when I was testing the lower end NVIDIA cards. What I was doing with those before is I was just putting uh, Far Cry 5 on low settings and also showing CSGO on the same slide. So I'm doing that again here. And again, uh, a very, very good in increase. We're, we're showing anywhere from about a 7% increase in Shadow of the Tomb Raider up to about 12 to 15% overall increase on all of these games across the board. And of course, I went ahead and ran some synthetics because I wanted to see how it mapped up or how it st stacked up against some of the other things, especially some of the other CPUs from AMD with graphics on them. We ended up doing pretty good there. I can't really complain. And you, you can see, again, it is an increase over the 4350G and the 4600G uh, to the point where this is a very, very solid processor. Uh, they're available right now pretty much anywhere. They're in stock. I expected anything with graphics to just be completely gone. And this, in my, this, in my mind, does a much, much better job than even uh, that GT 1030 or anything that we were testing. And probably along the lines of, I would guess, maybe even up to about GT, maybe GT 1050. And I, I don't know if it'd be as good as that. We might have to test it. I'll have to get my hands on a 1050 and find out. I don't remember if it's a GT 1050 or GTX 1050. I don't remember if they've gotten to the GTX by then. But anyway, we could, we could probably test that out and find out the next thing. Um, but I know that the graphics on the GTX 1650 uh, the 1650 Super I have and the 1660 I have are much, much better than this. But this is a very playable experience. And if you don't have a graphics card and you can't get a hold of anything or you're just doing a starter build and you want to wait for the market to, to stabilize and figure itself out, this is a very, very viable option and you're not losing a whole lot. You can, you can easily play on 720p or 900p and these are later titles. Now, CSGO is not a later title, obviously, that, that will run on pretty much anything, any potato, anywhere, anytime. Uh, but the other games, they're all recent, fairly recent releases. And so I don't think you will have any problem at all trying to run just about anything you've got. On that 5600G. Now, the advice I would give is go back and, and make sure that your drivers, uh, whatever drivers they may be, in this case it was the AMD Adrenaline driver, is updated because that will help with some of the glitches. And if you uh, if you're struggling with that, maybe lower some of your settings a little bit, or maybe turn some of the settings off here or there. But you should be able to get 720p or 900p to play very very easily. And and I would say probably a, a pretty pretty decent experience overall playing games. So I, I can't be upset. And overall, I'm very, very happy that I made the purchase because I am going to end up, I think, turning one of the computers I've got into sort of a sleeper build. And this might be the CPU I use in it. I, I don't know, but it might be something that I put in another computer that needs to be upgraded. I, I have no idea. It's a little bit less expensive than the 5600X that is currently available that does not have graphics on it but they are comparable they do uh they do figure pretty closely and maybe that's the next one i get to test out to see the 5600g and the 5600x see where they are with each other but anyway as far as the 5300 or 5350 that i got off of ebay the 4600 that came in the hp pre-built and this 5600 that i bought retail from amazon this 5600G is a winner, and uh, you do have to make sure your BIOS is updated, but it's a, it's a pretty good CPU. So that's all I've got for right now. I really did want to test that 5600G in the HP pre-built, and I just, it wouldn't work. I couldn't update the BIOS, and maybe I'll have to do some more research there, but that, that's going to be a future project. Uh, I did like the way it worked out pretty well in here. 
I am going to go ahead and do a few other tests uh, with the graphics card and maybe compare that a little bit to the numbers I got from the 4600G and the 3600X before. I don't know if that's worthy of another video. We'll see if, there, if it's interesting. Maybe I'll do it. But for the time being, if you are trying to build a system with that 5600 or if you are trying to build a system and don't have a uh, graphics card yet, and that 5600G is a really, really good option at 260 bucks. So if you liked the video, folks, or found it helpful, go ahead and throw a like on it. If not, you know, I get it. Totally understand. You can throw a, a dislike, but kind of let me know why. Uh, don't forget to visit me on the other social medias. If you're not already subscribed, please do so. I could really, I'm really trying to hard to get to the 500 subscribers so I can start getting on some of these affiliate programs and so they can help me and help you and help everybody else. And I want to do that by the end of the year if I can. So if you're not already subscribed, please do so. I appreciate it. But until next time, I've got two or three things that I'm working on. I'll have to find out which one I make more progress on and which one is more interesting. And that will be the video probably later in the week, but we'll see how it goes. So until next time, folks, I'll see you later.